Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson in our trades training video series. I'm Joe Carswell and this video is going to go over a, a variety of tools commonly found in construction. What you're looking at here is a general set that's good, a good starter set of tools for general construction. If we're talking about specific trades, there's a whole world of tools that will come into play. Those will be covered in other videos. So let's get right into it. Simple hand tools make or break a job. You always need the right hand tool at whatever moment to do whatever task you're doing. That means you have to know your tools, know what they're good for, know what they're not good for, and know which one at that moment you need to choose. So first up is our tool bags. We need something to keep these tools organized. A set of bags or a tool belt, you might hear this called, goes around your waist. And some people load from the front, some people put them in the back. This is going to be a quick on-off kind of thing, and we're going to load our tools into this bag. There's several pouches, compartments, uh, maybe a hook for a hammer that would go there, place for your uh, marking devices, place for your tape measure. This tool bag is going to keep these tools right where we need them all day. And this will allow us to pull from here if we're right-handed. We'll put certain tools. We'll, you will develop a favorite place or organization for what you're doing. This will make you very productive and keep all of your tools at your reach at all times. Next up, we have hammers. I have a lot of students ask me, why do we still need hammers? We've got all these modern power tools, pneumatics, nail guns, this kind of thing. Why do we use our hammers? My answer to that is I've never been on a job where I did not need to use my hammer. You won't make it through a job without your hammer. People don't realize that hammers are good for moving materials, nudging things, finishing out driving a fastener when a pneumatic nailer does not flush them out properly. And they also have claws on them. So if you have a fastener or some material you need to pry, this end of the hammer is going to be the one that will separate materials. So consider this is your face. This is a, a finish hammer. It, as you can see here, it's a 16 ounce finish hammer. Our hammers are gonna be weighted in, in ounces. And this has a smooth face, so we're going to call it a finish hammer. This means that if we strike a surface, it's not going to damage that surface. The smooth face helps in preserving that finish surface. So that's why we call it a finish hammer. Once again, we've got the claw on the back and it's got a little uh, notch in it that can grab on the fasteners. Next up, we have a heavier duty hammer. This is going to be a framing hammer. And as you can see here, this is a 19 ounce framing hammer, also weighted in ounces. It's a lot longer than a finish hammer if you wanted to compare the two. As you can see here, bigger head on the hammer that makes, makes the, the work happen, longer handle, and this is a, going to be for framing. This is a rough carpentry tool. It also has a very rough face on it. This is going to grip our nails or fasteners as we drive them. This will also make more damage to a surface, so you would not do finish work with a hammer that would possibly damage the surface. A pry bar is going to be used with a hammer for doing work like demo or prying in the same way that our claw, here's another framing hammer, the same way that our claw works, uh, the pry bar has this feature as well. It has a claw on both ends. So this tool is used for prying materials apart. And as you can see, it also has a notch in it that will be used for grabbing and pulling fasteners. This is a great tool for demo and separating materials out. This is a pretty heavy duty pry bar. And like a pry bar, a cat's paw does similar work. The pry bar is used for pulling fasteners that have been driven flush to a surface. So this tool is for prying materials, also pulling fasteners. Uh, cat's paw is for specifically pulling fasteners. So as you can see here, they both have a right angle end down here. That's going to be a high leverage end if we need to do a lot of work or need a lot of force. They also have a straighter or more finesse end. This one's going to be for doing less of a forceful operation of prying things apart. Also, a pry bar has a keyhole in it 
which can hook over the head of a fastener to pull it, another interesting feature. So our pry bars are prying tools. There's a whole myriad of measuring tools in construction. Measuring is really important accuracy when we're building. So we rely on these tools to do our measuring. And our first measuring tool is going to be a tape measure. This is our standard one that we're going to use to find dimensions, to measure mark and cut materials accurately. So your tape measure is going to fit in your bags. It's protected by a case. And the part that's protected is going to be the steel tape inside. This is marked with marks and numbers. And these numbers are going to be in inches and feet and inches. Also, fractions of inches can be measured. The tape is going to retract into the tool, so it's protected, and it's going to wind out, extend out, as far as the tape is made. This is a 25-foot tape measure. That's pretty standard size. Here's a 16-foot tape measure. Those you might see as well. That means this one's limited to 16 feet of the maximum length of measurement you can do. This is also a 25 foot, so 30 foot, 25 foot, very standard for general construction. We not only need to measure distances, we also need to measure angles. And a speed square is a great tool for measuring angles. This fits in your bag, very small, it's a six inch version, right? And it's important to talk about this idea of square or 90 degrees. So in building, if you look around at your environment that you're in right now, you're going to see a lot of 90 degree angles. We like this. We use this all day in building. So we need to reference it. So these two sides of a speed square are going to be 90 degrees to each other. So we can always reference 90 degrees with this tool. It will also take some short measurements. It has a ruler on it and it can also measure other angles. So we can count on this tool for all of our angle needs. There's different sizes of speed squares. This is a six inch, this is a 12 inch, and the 12 inch, obviously, the bigger the, the tool, the more accurate it is in a larger environment. So we're gonna, I'm gonna size our square up in a minute to even a bigger one. But as you can see here, these also can work as guides for a saw, if we need a, say, a square cut, we can use this speed square as a guide to make a nice 90 degree cut in a piece of material. So along these lines of squares, here is a carpenter square. Sometimes these size squares don't give us enough accuracy. They don't fit on the materials that we're trying to measure. So we can use a bigger one. This is a, a framing square. It's a large metal one, and it has some measurements on it, some marks on it, and it always references this 90 degree condition that we're always looking for when we're building. So this tool would be a great tool to use for setting up a set of stairs. If you look at a set of stairs, there is a whole lot of angles, but there's also a lot of 90 degree turns on them. It's a precision job that this tool is great for doing. So if you need a larger version of a speed square, this might be the one you would use. Marking devices are one of my most important ideas when I'm talking about building. People don't think about marking devices as tools. They, in fact, are, and they're related to how much accuracy you can achieve by the quality of your marking tool. The point on your marking tool can make a huge difference in how well you can build. So these are maybe one of your most important tools when it comes to accuracy. So there's a couple different styles here. You've got your standard number two pencil. We all know this one from school. We've got a carpenter's pencil, which, as you can see, is not round it is sort of flat this keeps this tool from rolling away if we're not if we don't if we place it on a surface that's not flat it won't roll away also we you might need a marker sometimes a pencil will not mark on the that we're working on this is sort of an all-purpose marker the problem with markers are a lot of times they don't have the pinpoint precision that a sharpened pencil does, but sometimes that is the tool that's the only tool that will get the job done. So as you can see here, three versions of a possible marking device. As you can see, I don't have a ballpoint pen in my arsenal here. I don't believe in ballpoint pens. I've seen people use them and I'm very 
confused by that. The ink from a ballpoint pen can make a lot of mess, doesn't mark that well, and I don't believe they're that accurate or convenient or useful. So these are my marking tool preferences. These would be in your bag. Have at least two pencils available so that if you lose one, somebody's not waiting around for you to search for that other pencil. It might be that we need to make a longer mark than a straight edge and a pencil. So we have a tool that will do that. It's a great quick uh, speed tool we use. It's called a chalk line. This is going to have chalk inside. It's got a, a, a case and that's going to hold the chalk. It also has a long string in it. This string with a hook like a tape measure is going to hook on an edge. We can extend that string out and that chalk on that string will get marked onto the surface by a simple snap of the line under tension. This is a great tool to use for speed marking. The line is not as accurate or precise as say a straight edge and a pencil, but we can make much longer marks with it. That would be very useful if we're on a roof and we need to make 20, 30 foot marks. A, a line or a string under tension will make that perfect straight line that we need. On to different types of measuring we have to do is we get into this whole family of things we're going to call levels. Levels have been around a long time. They're a tool that's very important for us to use. And we have two situations where levels can help us measure. That is, if we need to measure perfectly flat or horizontal, we're going to watch this bubble in here. And as we get it centered, that's our perfectly flat condition. If we turn it vertically, there's another bubble we're going to watch. And this is going to show us vertical. That means we're perfectly straight up and down. Here we're perfectly flat. Those two conditions are also something that we're always looking for when we're building. This relates to square and 90 degrees and now puts it in our space perfectly straight or perfectly flat. I say perfectly vertical or perfectly flat. So levels come in a lot of different sizes. That This is a short one, nine, say nine inch fits in our bags. Very convenient, but the longer the level, the more accuracy you get. Here is a box level. These come in different sizes. Same bubble that we're watching for perfectly level or perfectly vertical. And the longer the level, the more accurate it is over a long distance. So you might find this is a two foot level. You might see a three foot level, four foot level, six foot level. So obviously these don't fit in your bags, but you might pull one out depending on the situation, what you're working on, and there's a correct level for the length that you're trying to measure. So screwdrivers are always needed when we're talking about screws. Fasteners come in different types, and we need to know the right tips that will mate with the fasteners to get the job done. This is a multi-bit screwdriver. It's going to allow us to work with a lot of different types of fasteners or a couple different types. And let me show you. So this tool is, it, it has tips on both ends. These tips are also reversible. So I have four versions of tips here. These tips are Phillips head. And then on the other side, we have two sizes of flat heads. And they go like this and like this. These snap in and we can choose either side depending on the size of the fasteners. It's important that you know the size of your fasteners and the bit that fits into those fasteners to drive those screws or remove them successfully. So this tool is a really good one. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It is a four in one tool so you can save a lot of room in your bags by using this one. And this gets me into this conversation about driver bit types. So let's start with a flathead driver bit type. You've got a slot in the fastener. You've got a blade, a straight blade. It fits into this fastener. It can slip out. This is your my least favorite uh, version of a driver type. They still exist. You'll need to learn how to use them. The improved version is a Phillips head. This is a self-centering driver bit type. The driver bit fits into the fastener. It will not slip out. This offers us a lot more control of that fastener and a lot more force that we can apply to that fastener with and to get it driven and to not damage anything. 
an even better version is a Torx this is a star shaped version so this you're gonna make really good contact between the driver bit and the fastener it's not going to slip out and it requires a lot less force to drive these screws and you can do it a lot more successfully i find that people that are new at driving fasteners like these they have a lot of success with these torx uh, styles so we're moving on to cutting so we have a lot of cutting to do and that's going to be with power saws but with hand tools this is going to be your go-to for general cutting and that could be having to open up a pack of lumber you might have to cut the wrap off or you might need to cut a thin material like roofing material so this tool is going to be in your bag it has a retractable tip for safety so if it's if you're not using it you're going to pull that blade in the blade is also removable so we can take this tool apart using this screw we can replace this blade or turn it around we have a two-sided blade in here there's another version this is another version that has a retractable retractable blade as well what we will do to renew this blade is to snap off segments of it with a set of pliers and that will give us a new edge to work with two versions of a utility blade it's really hard to get through a job without one of these for example if i needed to sharpen a pencil this might be the tool i would use so along these lines of cutting i've got a set of chisels this is a set of a simple set of chisels chisels think about these like your mom's favorite pair of scissors or her kitchen knives you're not going to use these for everything but if you need to remove some wood material this might be the trick and you would do that with a hammer you're going to use a hammer on this end so they're made to be impacted with a mallet or a hammer this is your knife edge on this end here these come with sheaths on them and let me take and they're different lengths so i have a half inch i have a three quarter and i have an inch right that's the width of this this edge right here every other part of this tool is there to help the striking end and the knife end so we need to really protect and take care of this edge if it becomes dull this tool is no longer any good and we always have a save these they protect the edge keep it nice and sharp when it's in your bag and we're going to strike this tool it's going to remove wood on this end and the different widths are going to be depending on you get to decide how much material you need to remove so we're coming to the all-purpose tool and i tell people they ask me why do i need this in my bag here's what i tell them if you need a tool to abuse your five in one scraper is going to be the one to do it and often you need a tool that you're not worried about like your chisels with the knife edge this tool is very rigid it has a blade on it good for scraping it has a point on it if you needed to maybe dig out a staple if you had a staple in a, the end of a piece of lumber before you cut it it has a lot of features you can actually impact this end so this tool will hold up with some force from a hammer and this tool is good to have in your bag for just all purpose i hate to use the word but all purpose uh, general abuse on the job site it's not an expensive tool and it will save your other tools from damage a lot of times i see people take flathead screwdrivers and uh, beat on them with a hammer i think that's a bad idea that's not what the screwdriver is for this tool is for that kind of work so now we're going to get into a whole series of tools that we're going to use for gripping and a lot of times your hands or fingers are not strong enough to do some of the work you need to do in the field we have a whole range of tools that we're going to use we're going to call these gripping tools here we have an adjustable wrench i'm going to start with that one this tool comes in different sizes and it has jaws that move on them these jaws are adjustable and i do that with this thumb screw right here as you can see you turn it one way it gets bigger you turn it the other way it gets smaller these jaws are parallel to each other and this these this particular tool is used for hex fittings hex fittings have six sides if we look at this hex fitting each side opposite to each other is parallel so these jaws are also parallel so it will fit onto these sides and we're going to tighten it up on there nice and tight now we can turn or loosen that fitting bolt or nut 
And this tool will fit a variety of sizes of those things. So we only need one of these in our bags. Next up, we have pliers. So pliers offer a lot of leverage, much more leverage than we can get with our hand. We're actually multiplying the force of our hands when we're using pliers. So here I have two sets of pliers. I've got a, a set of slip joint pliers and I have a set of channel lock pliers. And I'm gonna show you the difference. Very similar tools in the way they work, but they're going to be used for different situations. So here I have a set of slip joint pliers. These have a hinge here that's adjustable. So as you can see, I have a range that I can set either close range or wider. So here is my slip joint. And as I move it over, now I have a larger range of what I can grab with these pliers. So in this setting, I can't close these tips. In the close setting, I can close these tips. Sometimes you need to grab bigger things and sometimes you need to grab smaller things. So you need to decide on the range you need, set these pliers to that range and use them appropriately. So here we have the channel lock pliers. These, we talk about range, these can go from very close to we can set them at the largest range at their slip joint to a very wide setting. As you can see, I have much more range with these pliers. And also you can see that these are much longer. So I've increased my leverage with this set. So you can think of these as small, uh, say medium size and large size pliers, depending on what you need to use them on. So in this family of pliers, you might see what's called wire cutters. Some people call these diagonal cutters. As you can see, they look very similar to a set of slip joint pliers. We don't have this slip uh, hinge on them and they're they're a, a fixed joint and they do not have gripping action they actually have cutting action so you can see a couple of knife edges on these tools and they're going to be cutting wire and uh, small bolts they can cut through steel copper aluminum uh, a lot of materials that other tools can't cut we're going to use the handles for the leverage and this tool might be the one to use if you need to cut something. Our last version of pliers is going to be our needle nose pliers. These are very useful and very specific. So the tips on these pliers are pointed. This is to be, do some very fine work and they can twist wire, they can grab things, very small things. Maybe you had a nail that needs to be straightened out or pulled and you can grab the head with them. They also, along with the wire cutters, have a set of wire cutters built into them. So as you can see back here in the back, those same knife edges, hardened knife edges, like the wire cutters, that will work to cut the same types of wires. So this is a multi-purpose tool that is great to have in your set. Clamps. Let me see where I've got a clamp. I've got one back here. So I've got a couple sets of clamps here and clamps come in different sizes. Sometimes you just need an extra set of hands. That's what these are good for. They have more force than, it, than you can hold yourself, and they have some rubber ends on them that are going to grab the material. These are adjustable. These are called quick clamps. That means I don't need any tools to adjust them. I'm going to pull this lever here, and I can slide this tool back and forth. So I have my general setting here. It's there's my maximum range of what I can grab. And this is going to slide in. Once I get it close to where I want it, I can pull this trigger and it will cinch these pads together to grip something really tightly. This set wouldn't fit in my bags, but this set would. So it's good to have a couple clamps around when you need that extra set of hands. So that's it for our introduction into general construction tools. I hope you've learned some new tools or learned some new features about tools that you are already know about. So thanks for watching. That's a wrap. Let's get back to work. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved.